All right, hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you are watching Helix Basics. This is a YouTube tutorial series I'm putting together to help new and experienced users program their Line 6 Helix floor. So a little about myself, once again, my name is Rosh, and I build and program guitar rigs out here in the LA area, as well as online. So my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Maroon 5, Perfect Circle, Melissa Etheridge, Bush, and more. And I wanted to give back to the Helix community and show some tips and tricks on how to program their Line 6 Helix. If you've been watching this YouTube channel, you've definitely seen me put up a lot of fractal audio content. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that I program all the modelers out there on the market, including the Quad Cortex, the Kemper, and uh, all the fractal products. And in this case, the Align 6 Helix floor. So um, there's a lot of crossover tips. There's a lot of uh, strategies that you can use no matter what model you're using. A lot of best practices that, that are going to help you get the best guitar tone both live in the studio, on stage, on tour, wherever you find yourself. Um, so this tutorial is going to be dealing with uh, the same thing as the previous tutorial where we're going to make a rock rhythm tone. But this time, uh, we're going to be using dual cabinets and we're also going to be doing it in HX Edit. So first thing we're going to want to do, of course, is navigate to a user set list. We want to start with a new preset. So let's start with this blank preset here. All of the set list can be found in this drop down menu and, of course, since I already have a preset there in 01A, we're going to use 01B and modify it from here. So we're presented with a blank preset, and right in the middle, we're going to add an amp. And in this case, let's uh, do something a little bit different. Let's do the Brit 2204. And this is basically the JCM 800. And um, now, if you listen to this tone without a cabinet, instead of using the amp plus cab, it's going to sound terrible. So of course you want to make sure that you're also using a cabinet. So let's click on this blank spot, uh, blank spot right there, and add the cabinet. And let's start with the Greenback 25 right here. Uh, and what we want to do is actually go into this drop-down menu and go to Dual Cabinets. And now we have the Greenback 25 as the first cabinet, and it has defaulted with the 2x12 Jazz Rivet in the second cabinet. So what we of course want to do is let's match the both these cabinets so that they're the same uh, cabinet. But when you use dual cabinets, usually what I recommend is that you pick different microphones. So in this case, the first cabinet has the 57. The second cabinet, we're going to go with a Roar 121. Usually um, a pairing of a dynamic mic and a ribbon mic is a very good combination. It's a very common, ubiquitous kind of amplify, you know, uh, you know recording amplifiers. And because the uh, dynamic mic provides a lot of that mid-range content that's going to help your tone cut through and punch through. And then the ribbon mics generally provide a lot of the low end and the smooth top end. They're dark and warm. And, um, you know, combining both these microphones gives you kind of like a very full, rich tone. So we're going to basically dial in a rock rhythm tone using these two microphones, basically on the same 4x12 greenback. So, um, what we're going to do, of course, is in the second cabinet, let's bring the level down first because we want to make sure that the we're listening only to this uh, microphone. So the first thing we're going to do is now that we've got everything kind of set up, let's just see here what we're starting with. So this uh, JCM 800, one of the things about this amp is that the interaction between the master volume and the drive is really useful. So the more you crank the master volume, the more gain you're also going to get. So if we leave this drive at 2.5, but we crank the master volume, check out what happens. As we bring the master volume down, the gain's also gonna go down. So there's a lot of interaction between the drive and the master. So you hear it changes the character of how the amp distorts as well because the virtual power tubes are getting driven harder as you bring the master volume up. So between the master and the drive, uh, you're going to have to find a ratio that works best for the tone that you're going for. So let's start with our master somewhere around here, and I'm going to bring the drive down. We're going for the kind of a rock rhythm tone, something that can be used in like, you know, a most contexts. Like if you're playing in a cover band, you're playing a lot of maybe, you know, 80s, 90s, 70s, classic rock kind of stuff. We're going to go for a tone similar to that. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good right there. I'm going to bring the channel volume up just to compensate for that. So you notice the drive is down pretty far, but we're getting a lot of the gain from the virtual power tubes being cranked up. So this is about a little above halfway. Um, I'm going to crank this up just a little bit more. 
And what I'm listening for is making sure that the low end doesn't just start squashing out. So again, if we bring it up to here, you can start hearing that the low end just starts falling apart in this amp. And you can also hear that if you crank the bass too much. So if I crank the bass all the way, you know, the low end again starts falling apart. So we're gonna keep the bass kind of low and we're gonna keep the master somewhere around there. If you need more low end in your tone, again, most of the tone shaping is gonna come from the cabinet block. So let's start working on the cabinet block. The first thing that we're gonna do, of course, is do our standard low and high cuts. I've addressed this in previous videos, so I won't go too in depth about this, but I recommend that most users start at 80 and then go somewhere between five and 8,000 kilo or 8,000 hertz or 5.0 kilohertz to 8.0 kilohertz, somewhere in this range. And again, for the low cut, somewhere between 80 and 100, depending how much low end you need in your tone. And again, we're listening to the 57. The 57 is gonna provide a lot of that mid-range punch. And by default, it went to the cap edge, which is where I recommend a lot of users start. Um, this is usually a general place that most people start miking a cabinet. And then if you move towards the center, it's gonna get brighter. If you move towards the outside, it's gonna get darker. So let's start with the cap edge right there and check out what we're working with. That's already a pretty useful tone there, but I'm gonna bring up the channel volume just to compensate. And a little bit of the master. All right, so this tone is actually pretty good already, but I could use a little bit more brightness, so we're gonna go a little closer towards the center. Yeah, somewhere around there. And again, I'm playing a Les Paul. I'm on the uh, neck pickup. I mean, sorry, the bridge pickup right now. And I think this would already be a useful tone um, if we also didn't have the 4x12 uh, green back with a different microphone. So now what we're going to do is we're, let's focus on the ribbon mic and let's bring the level in so you can hear that this is going to start filling out some of the edges of that tone. So... All right, so now I'm noticing that the low end is starting to get a little rowdy. So we're again gonna bring our low and high cuts in here. And let's hear what the tone is now. There we go, we have a little bit more control on that low end. All right, so you're already hearing a lot of low end coming from this microphone, especially when I'm, you know, palm muting a low E. And again, we don't have the bass that high in this tone. Maybe uh, it's a little above halfway. I'm going to bring the bass down just a hair. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is go to this ribbon mic, and I'm actually going to move it a little further out. I'm going to bring the level up a little bit more. And again, I'm just going by ear. I want a full sound. I want something that's going to respond well to the volume knob. And I want something that's going to have a lot of clarity so that even if I play, you know, you know, chords like triads and ninths and stuff, it's gonna have a lot of that information still in there. Because I find that if you have too much gain, then it just becomes kind of like a muddy mess. So I still find that this amp could go a little brighter. So we already got the treble crank, but let's crank the mids a little bit more. And what I'm really listening for is something that's going to sit below the cymbals. It's going to really cut through the mix without just being too harsh. So let's go back to the screen back and actually let's push it a little bit closer towards the center. Nah, I don't really like that. Let's move it back to where it was.
Cool. So already that tone is pretty happening. I think that could be a very useful tone for a lot of users. Um, so the next step that we can do, of course, is if you're going for something a little bit more modern or a little bit more aggressive, you can, of course, pick a different cabinet. So um, the first thing that we're going to do, of course, is let's just add a reverb here um, just to give it a little bit of space. I'm going to put a dynamic hall. Let's just bring this down to about one second and let's bring the mix down to about maybe 20%. So let's hear what we're working with here. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Now, this is kind of, uh, the greenbacks are, you know, darker. They're a little bit more of that classic rock kind of guitar tone. If you need something that's going to be a little bit more aggressive, of course, you can find a cabinet with some greenbacks in it. So the V, I'm sorry, find a cabinet with some V30s in it. So the V30s, as you can see here, the Brit, the Cali, the Uber, the, uh, the speaker is just a lot more aggressive. It's got a lot more of that upper mid spike. It's got a lot more of that sizzle that's going to definitely cut through the mix even more aggressively than the greenbacks. And again, these could be very useful for you. So for example, let's try the Brit V30, just like I did in the previous video. Um, and this time, what we're going to do, of course, is we want to make sure that both uh, cabinets are using the Brit V30. We're going to bring the level of this all the way down again so we can focus on that first cabinet. And I'm not going to even change the amp settings too much because, again, I do most of my tonal shaping in the cabinet block. So let's do a 57 mic. Let's do uh, make sure that it is directly on instead of off axis. And then let's do the position at the cap edge. And again, we're doing some standard low and high cuts here. So let's do 80 and 8,000. And of course, if we need to go brighter or darker, we can always adjust those values. So let's hear what we're working with here. So you can tell right away, it's a lot more sizzly, a lot more of that, you know, upper mid bite. And you can hear that there's just basically almost like no low end to this tone. So um, that's a lot more bitey and sizzly than I would like. So of course, I'm going to start moving this microphone a little away from the center. Maybe a little bit further back. And again, my paradigm is that I want this to be dealing with the tone that's going to be cutting through the mix. And then I'll have the uh, ribbon mic on this cabinet kind of fill out the rest of that guitar tone. Right. So let's go to this. And again, let's pick a ribbon mic. I like the 121. You can experiment with other ribbon mics like the 160 is pretty good as well. And the 160 to me is is very similar to this in flavor, but just maybe a little less low end. So we got the uh, ribbon mic right here, the Royer 121, and then let's do some standard low and high cuts. 80 and 8,000. And one of the things that it can be tricky to see about this ribbon mic is that you can't tell if it's on axis or off axis. So we're gonna put it directly on. An off axis sound is gonna have a little bit less top end. You know, it's gonna be kind of uh, it just is a tonal shift that uh, I'm not the biggest fan of, but again, it's, you know, something that can be useful for some users. So let's move this to the cap edge and then let's just see what kind of guitar tone we're working with. And then now I'm going to pan in the, or I'm going to bring in the level of the ribbon mic. So as you can hear right around the maybe 8 dB, you can start hearing that low end from this ribbon mic starting to come in. So you see here, it just goes away until maybe around here. All right, so we're hearing definitely a lot of sizzle for coming from both these microphones. So again, I'm going to move this a little further out. And I'm going to mix this in even more. Okay, so I feel like that's got a good amount of low end, but now there's still too much of that crispiness, that bacon grease frying kind of thing. So I'm going to move this microphone further away. Yeah, I think that's pretty good right there. 
And again, you can mess around with you know the positioning. Uh, obviously, if that's just way too much sizzle for you, you can of course go here. But I find that you're gonna start being too dark and I wanna have a tone that's gonna cut through the mix without sounding harsh. Yeah, so that crispiness that you hear is definitely something, or that sizzle is definitely something that helps you cut through the mix. But again, if the sizzle is just too much, we can always bring the high cut down to about 5,000 and it's gonna get rid of a little bit of that sizzle. As you hear here, so it really depends. But again, in my opinion, the sizzle for this type of guitar tone is definitely what helps you stand out in the mix. So of course you can take out the, you, you can drop the high cut in both tones. And now you still have an aggressive sound, but it's gonna be a little bit less of that sizzle and it's gonna be a little bit darker. So again, it can really depend on the context of what you're doing. Uh, maybe you're going for a lead sound using this kind of cabinet and you want a little bit of that upper mid spike to cut through, but you definitely still want something smoother. Obviously dropping that high cut down is definitely some, uh, the way to go. As opposed to keeping that 8K in both mics. So you can definitely hear a lot more of that sizzle. And again, we're going for a rock rhythm tone. Um, for lead sounds, I would definitely, you know, probably pick a different amp or a different cabinet, or I would just dial it in completely different. And the cool thing is with the Helix and other modelers, you can use a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different approaches to that. So, but for a rock rhythm sound, again, something that's a little bit more aggressive, I think this is definitely the way to go. Again, for the, these are for the users who are maybe in a cover band who are playing, you know, a little bit more of the 80s rock and the 90s rock stuff. This definitely is a little bit more aggressive than the Greenbacks, which are more maybe classic rock oriented. <laughs> But I think they still sounds really good. And again, if you need more low end, by all means, blend more of the ribbon mic in. And of course, you can always dial out a little bit more of the 57. So if we drop the volume of the 57 and have the ribbon mic kind of carrying the tone a little bit. It's a lot darker as opposed to this. So you can hear that the 57 is really doing a lot of that work in that frequency range that the guitar lives. So again, in my opinion, the fifth, let the dynamic mics kind of do the heavy lifting and then you're using this secondary cabinet to kind of round out the sound to fill in the gaps of what you're looking for. In my case, I'm looking for a little bit more warmth and smoothness on the guitar tone. So at this point, I think this is a good place to wrap it up for this video. Again, this is a rock rhythm tone. We used uh, two different uh, cabinets, the greenbacks and the V30s. And again, a lot of tonal shaping is happening in the cabinet. You can see I didn't spend too much time in the amp block. I just kind of dial it in for feel. I kind of dial it in for the amount of gain I want and then just the level. Most of the time, a lot of users are l pretty shy to crank some of the knobs up. But again, you can compensate for where the knobs are going to be. So you can see that the treble's at 10, the mids are at 8, and most users would be very scared to crank the treble on a Marshall amp like this. But again, we get a lot of the tonal shaping coming from the microphone. So uh, I'm not scared to just crank any of these uh, knobs. And again, I'm listening more for uh, how the amp is responding or what the amp feels like as opposed to using the bass mid and treble as tonal shaping tools. As we get into the, some of the other amps, you'll notice that as well, especially, you know, for example, the Cali amps, which are the Mesa Boogie amps, some of these knobs don't even really do anything other than affect the feel. They don't even really shape the tone that much, and most of it's going to come from the cabinet. So again, if you're struggling with your guitar tones, really, really focus on getting you know the cabinet work done in your guitar tones, and uh, that's definitely the way to go. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys need any help, any one-on-one -on -one help programming your Helix or any other modeler out there, by all means, feel free to reach out to me. I would love to help you out. Uh, we can set up a session, and uh, we can go from there. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. I'm falling with you. I'm standing with you.